Hello, I'm Achit Nair from Nair's Aviation Ground School. This is the 21st video in a new series of educational aviation videos for the aspiring pilot. Takeoffs are optional, landings are mandatory. So goes the commonly stated aeronautics idiom. The takeoff is the first phase of flight and the landing is the final phase of flight. In order to get to the in-between phases of flight, it is important that the pilot knows how to take off and land the aircraft. Doing a takeoff, flying around the airport, and coming in for a landing are one of the most basic and most important foundational aspects of aviation. This video is about air traffic patterns. Flying around the airport is a basic technique used in flight training to get pilots comfortable with the airport environment and managing the workload needed to land at airports around the world. Airport traffic patterns are developed to ensure that air traffic is flown into and out of an airport safely. Each airport traffic pattern is established based on the local conditions, including the direction and placement of the pattern, the altitude at which it is to be flown and the procedures for entering and exiting the pattern. Unless the airport displays approved visual markings indicating that the turn should be made to the right, the pilot should take all turns in the pattern to the left. When operating at an airport with an operational control tower, the pilot receives a clearance to approach or depart, as well as pertinent information about the air traffic by radio. If there is no control tower, it is the pilot's responsibility to determine the direction of the traffic pattern to comply with the appropriate traffic rules and to display common courtesy toward other pilots operating in the area. When operating in the traffic pattern at an airport without an operating control tower, the pilot should maintain an airspeed of no more than 200 knots, or about 230 miles per hour. In any case, the pilot should adjust the airspeed when necessary so that it is compatible with the airspeed of the other airplanes in the pattern. The pattern at an airport consists of five legs. The legs are the upwind leg, the crosswind leg, the downwind leg, the base leg, and the final approach or leg. These legs are so named to identify the direction of the aircraft's motion with regards to the runway that is being used. The upwind leg is a course flown parallel to the landing runway in the same direction as the landing traffic. The upwind leg is flown at a control airports and after go-arounds. When necessary, the upwind leg is part of the traffic pattern in which the pilot will transition from the final approach to the climb altitude to initiate a go-around. When a safe altitude is attained, the pilot should commence a shallow bank turn to the upwind side of the airport. This allows better visibility of the runway for departing aircraft. The crosswind leg is the part of the rectangular pattern that is horizontally perpendicular to the extended center line of the takeoff runway. The pilot should enter the crosswind leg by making approximately a 90 degree turn from the upwind leg. The pilot should continue on the crosswind leg to the downwind leg position. Since in most cases, the takeoff is made into the wind, the wind will now be approximately perpendicular to the airplane's flight path. As a result, the pilot should turn or head the airplane slightly into the wind while on the crosswind leg to maintain a ground track that is perpendicular to the runway centerline extension. The downwind leg is a course flown parallel to the landing runway, but in a direction opposite to the intended landing direction. This leg is flown approximately one half to one mile out from the landing runway and at a specified traffic pattern altitude, usually a thousand feet above the ground. When flying on the downwind leg, the pilot should complete all before landing checks and extend the landing gear if the airplane is equipped with retractable landing gears. Pattern altitude is maintained until at least a beam the approach end of the landing runway. At this point, the pilot should reduce power and begin a descent. The pilot should continue the downwind leg past the point abeam the approach end of the runway 
to a point approximately 45 degrees from the approach end of the runway and make a medium bank turn onto the base leg. Pilots should consider tailwinds and not descend too much on the downwind so as to have a very low base leg altitude. The base leg is a transitional part of the traffic pattern between the downwind leg and the final approach leg. Depending on the wind condition, the pilot should establish the base leg at a sufficient distance from the approach end of the landing runway to permit a gradual descent to the intended touchdown point. The ground track of the airplane while on the base leg is perpendicular to the extended center line of the landing runway. Although the longitudinal axis of the airplane may not be aligned with the ground track when it is necessary to turn into the wind to counteract drift. While on the base leg, the pilot must ensure before turning on to the final approach leg that there is no danger of colliding with another aircraft that is already established on the final approach. Pilots must not attempt an overly steep turn to final, especially if uncoordinated. Remember, if in doubt, go around. The final approach leg is a descending flight path starting from the completion of the base to final turn and extending to the point of the touchdown. This is probably the most important leg of the entire pattern because the sound judgment and precision required to accurately control the airspeed and descent angle while approaching the intended touchdown point. The final approach leg leads with the successful landing of the aircraft on the runway. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, the most probable cause of mid-air collisions is the pilot failing to see and avoid other aircraft. When in the traffic pattern, pilots must continue to scan for other aircraft and check blind spots caused by fixed air structures, such as doorposts and wings on the aircraft. High-wing airplanes have restricted visibility above, while low-wing airplanes have restricted limit visibility below. The worst case scenario is a low wing airplane flying high above a high wing airplane. Banking from time to time can uncover blind spots. The pilot should also occasionally look at the rear of the airplane to check for other aircraft. It is very important to look for traffic during the pattern and especially while coming in for a landing. The air traffic pattern or airport pattern is one of the most important aspects of aviation. Learning how to fly the pattern will allow the pilot to successfully take off and land at any airport they encounter. Furthermore, it is important to know the decorum and structure that is needed to operate an aircraft safely at the airport. For more information, please contact us at liftanddrag@gmail.com and visit our website at nyersaviation.webnode.com. Thank you. Safe flying.